Halo the series comes to us at a precarious time in Halo's life cycle. Halo Infinite failed to launch in a feature complete state, and ever since, fans are disappointed about the live service model. Content drip is very light, and 343 is recycling content in the store, and basic monetization is failing in Halo Infinite. On top of that, 343 and Microsoft have missed a massive opportunity for cross promotion. Halo Infinite is completely silent about Halo the series, and Halo the series is completely silent about Halo Infinite. There's no cross promotion whatsoever. Many Halo fans are correctly critical that it was a missed opportunity not to feature customization items of the Spartans in the show in the game of Halo Infinite. We have entered a time in the public zeitgeist where the tone toward Halo Infinite has rapidly soured as fans wonder if 343 Industries and Microsoft can fully capitalize upon the success that Halo Infinite had at launch. With some fans being so critical as to say that Halo Infinite won't come back from its current run and that Season 2 doesn't have enough content to carry it through long enough and that Halo Infinite will eventually be a dead game by live service standards. This is where the Halo fandom is right now. Uncertainty, doubt, and the jaded weariness that this is yet another failure to launch. So, does the Halo TV show pull through? Hard to tell by just one episode, but here are my thoughts. Naturally, there will be spoilers ahead, so this is your one and only warning. Click away now. When it comes to TV and movies, I'm a pretty easy person to please. So much so, that I was actually able to stand and sit through the entire runtime of the Star Wars sequels, including Last Jedi, without losing my attention. So take my opinion with a grain of salt that my opinions are not always the most discerning when it comes to matters of film and TV. I actually really enjoyed the first hour of the Halo series, so much so that I watched it twice. Although it must be said that Paramount seriously needs to get its backend in order. Even with the 400 megabyte per second download speed, I just couldn't get the servers to give my computer the full resolution. I had to bring out my phone in order to view it in 1080p, but for the most of the time, the first time I watched it, I viewed the entire show in like 480p and it looked horrible. So if the screenshots you see look like potato quality, it's Paramount's fault. I watched the series a second time on my phone on the same network and I was easily able to get a 1080p or a 1440p version. Moving on from that, let's change tone and start my discussion of the first episode of the Halo series. We all know that video game adaptations have a an uphill battle to fight because it's very difficult to transfer the heart and soul from a video game onto a novel, a TV show, or even worse, a movie. Movies have the worst reputation of all, and I'm happy to say that the Halo TV show pretty much almost sort of dodges that bullet. I think this is due to the decision to separate from video game canon, and I'm quite happy with that decision. Because if you come to a video game adaptation, you either have to tell the stories that you already know with the same characters, make up new stories with the old characters, or run with the canon that you already have and make up completely new characters and essentially bastardize the universe that you already have to the point that it's no longer recognizable. If you want to see Master Chief, you're either going to see him as you already know him, or you're going to see him in ways that don't really have any impact into the larger story of the Halo saga. When you're adapting a video game, it's difficult to tell a new story without compromising the old ones. That said, it still does need to be said that some of the action is just a little bit cheesy. The elites and the Covenant don't look... We're back to the 343 model of where they look more like brutes. I think Hidden Xperia called them more like Krogan from Mass Effect. They're like big, bulky, very sort of ham-fisted brutes, like I said. And we've taken a step away from every advent that we've had, every correction that Halo Infinite had in doing them correctly. The Covenant are, in my opinion, not handled correctly in this show. And that's because of two, well, one reason. The Covenant are actually displayed in two ways throughout all of Halo canon, whether it's Forward Unto Dawn, Halo Reach, or Halo 3. The way Master Chief sees the Covenant is not how everybody else sees the Covenant. The Rookie, Noble Six, the cast of Forward Unto Dawn. Master Chief is not phased by the Covenant, so the Covenant aren't very scary. But this is told through the story of, through the lens of not only Master Chief, but also other characters. So it's correct that the framing of the Covenant is much more akin to that of Halo Reach. But I have to be said, just by judging what we've seen by Episode 1, which is not much 
admittedly we haven't seen that much so things could change in episode two or three or whatever but and there's there's 10 episodes in total but the covenant really are not that scary at the end of episode one it's really prime that the unsc rather more than anybody else is the primary bad guy the antagonist to master chief what i'm trying to say is the covenant really are not that scary they're mostly just raiders at this point they can granted they're very powerful raiders but it's gonna be a while before we see them glassing planets and taking on the full mantle of the we're gonna exterminate humanity sort of alien invasion trope not to mention that no other covenant species besides prophet of mercy is actually shown while the covenant don't really look as good as they do in halo infinite their violence certainly does they are truly depicted as overwhelming force that cannot be resisted at all as they were in halo reach and their weapons are lore accurate there's actually supposed to be able to do that in the games blow off limbs and disintegrate people and all that this comparison was inevitable but i think that the fight scenes of halo landfall that halo 3 trailer from 15 years ago those looked pretty good i think i like that better it looks much more brutal whereas the comp, it really does suffer from that video game adaptation quality where it looks very cheesy. Master Chief jumping around with no weight. Combat just kind of happens. Like, when it comes to Quan Wa's father to get killed, the Elite just kind of shows up out of nowhere. Cinema Sins would have so much fun with this show. There's probably a hundred Sins on this, on this episode alone. Like how Silver Team just shows up exactly at the right moment in order to save the day. It's just a little... Quixotic. Okay, moving on, I think all of the actors carried their roles brilliantly. Prabhu Schreiber was, was great as Master Chief, I really like that. But I gotta say that the line delivery f through the Spartan helmet was a little weird. It sounded like every line coming from Master Chief was delivered after Pablo Schreiber ran a 5 minute mile. I don't know if the filter is the right way to go because the games, Steve Downs doesn't sound like he has any filter on it, it just sounds like his normal voice, whereas Pablo Schreiber, it's like, it's so breathy and uh, like exhausted that you can't even hear what he's saying and it kind of hurts his line delivery a bit, I think. That said, some sins can never be forgiven, like British Dr. Halsey. Every single character with a British accent in Halo is evil. Full stop. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously. A a the actors were all, were all great. What I do want to be critical, though, of, however, is the cinematography. I felt that the framing, the presentation of everything was overly histrionic, hammy, overdramatized. I think the music, it was a little too cr up there all the time. It, it's like, you can have your main character take a dump to two steps from hell but then what are you gonna play when it's time to save the world vivaldi it's like every time if like if master chief is gonna fart like gregorian chanting like really that's not to say it wasn't done well in some places the gregorian chanting the halo main theme that happens toward the end of the show that was des deserved it. that's the Gregorian chanting is usually associated with awe of the Forerunner legacy and that Forerunner device that basically EMPs the entire facility. Yeah, that's that's deserved. That motif goes correctly. I want to talk a little bit more about framing because I know that we are having an admitted departure from the games, but it must be said that the legacy Halo games had a very neutral framing that was able to handle both levity and gravity at the same time funny characters like sergeant johnson were able to have a serious death and you can have serious moments go alongside light-hearted funny ones where the where the marines or the covenant are making jokes and having funny lines or and we all know that halo infinite's grunts are savage brutal and hilarious all at the same time i wonder would sergeant johnson a character like sergeant johnson who was funny and brings levity to the story break the framing of the Halo TV show. Is the Halo TV show so overly serious that it breaks immersion with what the Halo soul is? Is this show too serious, too theatrical, not capable of 
capturing the more light-hearted Halo moments. And I think that just really remains to be seen. Master Chief tells a joke at one point, and it's deliberately meant to be awkward, but I wonder if the framing that the cinematographers have adopted is a little bit too serious to, to capture the soul of what Halo is supposed to be. If you think back to the original Bungie games, that stylistic flair of comedy, remember that the Halo 3 brutes, the grunts, obviously, the marines would obviously taunt everybody. Halo is a series that's not supposed to take itself too seriously, and there's supposed to be comedy mixed in, and I think that that would break the framing of this series, because the way the cinematographers have framed some th these things, it's so histrionic, so dramatic all the time, and everything is extremely serious. So those are my thoughts on the series, and in, in all in all, I think that if the showrunners are able to accurately take the Halo universe and tell a good story in it with the characters that we know, and are able to bear some resemblance to the games that we all know and love, I think Microsoft would have be much more successful in converting Halo into an IP that's much more into the into the category of like Star Wars. The budget of the Halo show has been compared to Game of Thrones and The Mandalorian, and I honestly think it's not too far off. We have to see where the story and the writing goes. But all in all, I think this is a pretty good start to Halo on TV. Whether or not this is a successful video game adaptation will only be answered when every single episode is aired and we can really discern whether the soul of Halo has been carried over, has been translated onto the TV. And at that time, I'll be right here to cover it. Before you go, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.